Hello, everybody, and welcome to another show of Revit Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Catelier, an architect and BIM specialist based in Quebec City, Canada. I am also the founder of the website RevitPure.com, uh, where I try to teach Revit uh, as simply as I can, so you can make the most out of it. Um, Revit Pure Live is a show where, at least usually, we help you become a better Revit user. And also we tackle some Revit adjacent and other BIM topics like today. Um, before going on with our guest, a few things to talk about. Uh, for those who don't know, RevitPure.com is our website. Uh, you will find multiple stuff there. On the blog, you'll find multiple entries to help you uh, tackle complicated Revit topics. We've just slightly remade the, the page for our beginner's course called Basics, um, which has been downloaded thousands of times by users worldwide and contains an ebook, videos, template, exercise project. So you can learn more about it at revitpure.com slash basics. And something else that I wanted to mention, actually, I'll go to the announcement at the same time. I uh, can announce next week's episode will be with Eli Gold uh, from the Quebec Wood Export Bureau. He is the U.S. representative uh, for QWeb, and he's a wood structure expert. So next week's show is going to be all about wood. I love wood in uh, um, architecture, so I think it's going to be super interesting. And we're going to talk about how to use uh, wood in Revit with families. And let me go back to the screen here. And something interesting, I have a little tease for you before next next week's show about wood. Uh, if you go to the blog, the second entry is called Timber Curtain Wall Free Revit Family Download. And for the last month, I've been grinding on this family. I thought it would be simple to make. And although I think the family is simple to use, there's a lot under the hood there to make it work properly. Uh, because it's a family that has an aluminum cap, but timber mullion. And in Revit, by default, you cannot have two different materials for the, the cap and the mullion. So I had to find a workaround to make it work smoothly. But I think I've managed to do it. And it's a gorgeous product. You can see a few uh, pictures here on real projects in the US. And you can download the whole, the whole family for free at uh, ripthrower.com slash blog slash timber current wall. Or just go to uh, rip your website, go to the blog, and it's the second blog post at the moment. And you can have a look. I had so, some instructions on how to use it and how uh, I've built this family along with the link to download it. So you can have a look at that. All right, let's get on with it. Today's guest is Andrel Lenowitz. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Andrel is a senior technical specialist and BIM expert based in Chandler, Arizona. She has a Master of Architecture from Savannah College of Art and Design. Since her graduation, she has worked for general contractors, MEP con subcontractors, and BIM consultants. In 2018, Andrel joined the US CAD team as a senior technical specialist. She spoke at multiple major BIM events like Built and Autodesk University and frequently shares her knowledge on webinars. In addition to Revit, Andrel developed knowledge about Formit, a 3D conceptual modeling tool made by Autodesk. Today, we're going to find out with Andrel if Formit is the SketchUp killer or not. <laughs> so welcome to the show, Andrel. Hi, everyone. Well, thanks for accepting the invitation. Of course, thanks for having me. So uh, I always ask, like to ask my, my guests about their background. So how did you come to do BIM and to be a Revit specialist? Uh, I graduated with my master's right in 2009. So the first industry that started hiring was um, construction. And I happened to have one of my minors focus in the building arts um, or computer design for building arts. It was it was an art school. They had to fancy it up. So basically it was Revit and um, 
Viz at the time, which, you know, is 3DS's Mac's sister that no longer exists, Maya, Photoshop, things like that. Uh, and so because I knew that software and I picked it up really quickly, um, I happened to luck into a uh, VDC position for a company that was starting and willing to invest in training me. Uh, and I was actually recommended for the position by a uh, an Autodesk reseller. So ever since then, it was always my goal mm -hmm. to come work for uh, an Autodesk reseller. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess in 2009 was not an easy time to find jobs, right? No. In architecture. Yeah, probably so. Interesting. So, so you've worked for general contractors and MEP, some contractors, and now since 2018, you're doing finally uh, working for Autodesk reseller, right? Yep. Yep. All right. Wow, it was a fun journey. <laughs> yeah. And how did you get interested in 3D conceptual modeling? Uh, so um, when I worked for general contractors, we did a lot of site logistics planning and we use SketchUp for that. And so the site logistics planning in 3D um, helped won us, won us, <laughs> win us um, several um, awards and contracts because we were able to show like hospital phasing and keeping entrances open. So I took that um, bit of information, that, that site logistics part of modeling and wanted to take it into um, my, my next jobs. And so I, I use SketchUp a lot. So I'm a bit more on the more technical side of using conceptual modeling, mm -hmm. but it is all concept and, and quick visual expression, regardless of if it's something freeform or something uh, that can you know impact the job site. So it's been pretty neat. So my challenge coming over to an Autodesk reseller was, what do I do now that I don't have SketchUp? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. so, okay, so you were kind of forced uh, at first to use it, right? Yes. When it first came out, mm -hmm. I do have to say when it first came out, a lot of people were like, oh, form, it's not quite there. It's not what we're looking for. It's not as easy to use. Um, and I find that's the case with a lot of software. A lot of things will first come out and people just be like, what is this? And throw their hands up and like, you know, mm -hmm. throw it down the, the garbage chute. And then I've given a few years, you know, check back on it every so often, see what the updates are. And I feel like as of about 20, I'd say 2020, well, um, so the ver the release of 2020, so the year of 2019, I think Formit was well worth the look and the investment. 2019, you say? The year was 2019. The version release was 2020. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Autodesk yes, is off sure. by a year. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I, when, when, I tried to remember when uh, was the first time I've heard about it. I think it might have been all the way back in, was it the first time I was at AU? Maybe 2015. Was it around back then? I think I think so. It did it did start. I know at least by 2016 because that's when I took my first look at it and was mm -hmm. like, "What is this?" Yeah. <laughs> so, it took me some time to come back to it myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess I'll ask people in the chat if uh, how many of you have been using Formit. So let us know, and a few people already let us know where they're from. Uh, if that isn't the case already, you can type it in in the chat. I love to see where people are watching from. We have some people from. Uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey, Miami, Virginia Beach, uh, Tijuana, uh, Laval, uh, Quebec, Canada, uh, Libreville, Gabon, uh, sunny Granada, South Spain, Fort Worth, Texas, South <laughs> Africa, Cape Town. So I'm always kind of but, amazed at how all over the place people are watching. From. Yeah. And fun fact for me, even though I'm in Arizona now, I was actually born not far from Virginia Beach. So yeah, really? Well, I, yeah, I saw that you went to Savannah in, in Georgia. So yep. you were originally from that area? Uh, originally from uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. OK. And, and so how yeah, did you... so the DC area. So yeah. So how did you end up in Arizona? Uh, the one of the companies I worked for uh, that's nationwide had an office out here mm -hmm. and I decided that I could afford a house here instead of an apartment in DC. Mm, so I yeah. relocated. Good move. Good move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love Arizona. I've been there like 10 years ago. I mean, it's pretty hot, but I remember <sighs> going to, is it Flagstaff? That, uh, mm -hmm. it's, Flagstaff's it's, a really nice place. Yeah. It's, it's you, you come up from the desert and you, you drive up, up, and then super hot. And at some point, there's huge pine forest and it, the smell is amazing. It yep. smells like fresh wood and this, this really cool college town. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I remember from Arizona. Plus the Grand Canyon, of course. Yeah, I, I love that state. <laughs> All right, so I think, so I'm just looking at the chat. Oh, yeah, a lot of people answer there. Uh, Thunder Bay, uh, Plano, Texas, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Tel Aviv, Kalamazoo, Michigan, somebody else from Tel Aviv, Oakland, New Zealand, Philippines, Montreal, uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario, Colombia, South Carolina, Mexico City, uh, England, Bogota, somebody else from New Zealand. All right, so uh, a lot of people from all over the place. Uh, is there anything else? It's already a, a, a comment from Scover DX says, also content is king, no content, well, no adoption. I, I guess we'll talk about it during the show. So I'll switch to, now we can see your screen. Okay. I'm going to minimize my uh, video feed up there. So, all right. Uh, so this is uh, a little bit of a presentation, I guess, about Formit. We're going to start with a, just a few slides, then we're going to go into an actual live demo, and then we're going to wrap up with a few closing um, thoughts. So uh, with that, um, these are the, the people that you will hear talking. <laughs> Nicholas has already introduced himself and myself, but I figured uh, just in case for those who are late, if you want, um, there's some of our contact information. Also, if you look for us on LinkedIn, our names are very fairly unique. I'm pretty certain if you find anyone with those names, <laughs> that's us. So, <laughs> yes. uh, so feel free to yeah track us down. All right. Um, so with that, uh, the the overall kind of um, topics to tackle here are things like, why do we still need um, quick conceptual modeling tools, um, understanding similarities between SketchUp and Formit with the whole Formit versus SketchUp uh, concept of this, um, get familiar with the Formit user interface. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about the um, Dynamo that already exists in Formit. Uh, it's really neat, it's really helpful. Um, linking Formit into your Revit model, there are some workflows and some pros and cons to two different ways to do it. So I want to talk about those. Um, yeah, and that's basically what I had before going into the demo. So um, if you have questions, as you have questions, the ghost is going to keep an eye on the chat. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to hop right over into uh, Formit. Great. Well, you sound like a webinar veteran. <laughs> <laughs> I do this a lot. Um, okay, so this is Formit. Welcome to Formit. Uh, you're going to notice a few similarities and distinctions almost immediately. So I do have a project already open um, instead of a, a blank new project. Uh, if you did see a blank new project in here, it would have like its little grid um, and its little um, UCS piece in there. Uh, but I wanted to kind of start um, with a bunch of examples in here and go around and show a series of kind of its tools. But before I get there, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the user interface differences that you're going to see. So the first thing that you're you're going to notice is, well, you've got you know your file, you've got all your, your base things that are up here. Everything that you see up here is pretty much also already down here. So um, there's, uh, you know, your file options that are in here for new sketch is the same thing that's here. So uh, everything that's up in your little tabs is already down in your, your ribbon. So you can use it any which way. Most things have keyboard shortcuts, which you can learn uh, as you go. There are some basic analysis tools. So being able to move and measure, cut sections. Here's our drawing tools. And they're going to look a little bit different than you're used to if you're used to SketchUp. So if I want to come down here, then I would expand out the draw tool. So these are basically 2D elements. And then Formit has something SketchUp doesn't have. They have 3D um, primitive elements here, ready to go. Then there's some advanced tools that they've got. And then there's just its uh, grouping is its own little piece in here. So it's essentially managing what you're drawing. So be before we get uh, further along, I already have a question. Somebody asked, is this the pro version? Yes, this is the pro version. Pro comes with AEC collections. Uh, so if you have AEC collection, it is included free. Um, and with AEC collection, you also now get Ben 360 or well, Autodesk Docs included as well. And it does save itself up to um, Ben 360. So you can actually view in Ben 360 
uh, the SketchUp file live there too, and you can link from there. Uh, so it's, it's pretty neat. This is the pro version. I think if you pay for it, it's comparable to SketchUp's base cost. I think SketchUp's base cost might be $299 and this might be $309, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so. and, but, and okay, okay, but is this, this is a standalone software because the free version is on the, on the web page, on the web. right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the free version is a web viewer. Um, the pro version is standalone. Um, and there are some um, mild differences between um, iOS capabilities uh, that are also um, on the roadmap. Mm -hmm. um, so iOS has to use the, the web version of it. Um, but I do think there are some differences on the web version when you have pro as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, and the, the pro version, it, it's just one and done. It's not different tiers. So um, I think SketchUp has several different tiers. This one already has like analysis, like your um, mm -hmm. sun and solar analysis and energy. Like you can actually use Insight, Autodesk's Insight here um, to get energy reports. And it's all just, it's either there or it's not, so. And so you say there are 3D shapes available to you, but would you yeah. say most of ge geometry, is it done to uh, uh, faces and uh, surfaces like in SketchUp or would you mostly I'm use 3D shapes? I'm actually super glad you brought that up mm -hmm. because you can do either you can do either way, whatever way is more comfortable for you. So, for example, one of the really neat things that I absolutely love about um, uh, sorry, form it is uh, if you have um, shapes, you can you can make blocks, you can extrude them out. So if I wanted to draw my shape, right, my my whatever shape I'd want to draw here, I can draw it. I can um, close it out. It's a shape. Here's the tricky thing, and the thing that I banged my head over so much in Ske from SketchUp to Format, where is my push-pull? <laughs> it does not exist. How Format works is that if, you're, if you have a face selected, so not the edges, but the face, and I were to grab it and move it, it extrudes it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I have everything selected and I go to move it, it moves the whole thing. Oh, okay. So it, it there is a push pull, but you do you need to select the middle point, the face, the face. Okay. Yeah, anywhere on the face. Yeah. So it it does have faces like uh it 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 can be absolutely a face here. So if I were to select that and delete it, it does make this hollow space. But at the same point in time, it also will treat it like it's a solid um object. So I can take the circle, and this is something that um you know, SketchUp can't do. It can come out this way, but it can't go through. So I can pull that, you know, wherever I want, and it's cut a hole through. Mm -hmm. And so if I grab that face and I want to pull this face down and I can pull it down any which way I'd like, it can regenerate that. It knows it's a solid. It knows what shape that is that it's going to be making. So it really will depend on your comfort level of how you'd like to do um, to model. Do you want to start with a solid shape? Do you want to start with a sketch? It works really well um, for both. Uh, and the nice thing about it is if I want to come put a block in here and let's say I, I know I'm going to be working in a specific um, place, I can use my tab key. So if you look in your lower left hand corner, it says hit tab to access to tool controls and I hit tab, I can define its size before I even place it. So that's pretty neat. So, uh, so that that's one of its, its really neat things about, you know, whether it's a, it's a, a face or a solid, and you actually have um, this thing called a contextual menu. Um, we're used to it in Revit. It's the green part that pops up when you select something. It's your contextual modify. So this contextual modify here bases itself on what you have selected, and you right click, and you get a circle of tools. So just like there's no push pull button, where's, um, let's see, there's array, where's copy? <laughs> Copy was another one that drove me crazy. So I figured it out uh, it's in this 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 piece. So th those are my two really big head banging things. We're figuring out that um, there's no push pull, and even in my contextual menu, there's no push pull. So it's just a matter of um, figuring out how Formit was thinking. So all of your tools are in here. So if you need to rotate, delete something, they're all in here, and you can actually reverse face here. So if you want to treat it like it is a surface, like a mesh you can reverse that face. Uh, and then also, if you have objects, you can um, convert them all to meshes. And if you have meshes, you can convert them to objects. 
And so, so what what does this mean? What can you do more with uh, meshes that you can do with uh, uh, faces or other types of objects? So meshes are just, um, it, it depends on your, your file size generally. So for example, um, you can bring in, this has a lot, uh, a lot of file types it can open, including SketchUp. So if you have a whole SketchUp library, it can bring all of those in so you don't lose anything you've made. Um, but some of those can be really heavy uh, when they get converted to an object. They might be, you know, um, graphically heavy or just, you know, larger files. So as you're working, you might want to convert them kind of from one to another until you're ready for, you know, your final renders or your import into um, into Revit. So that's kind of that's kind of some of the differences. You can bring in really heavy objects and still make Format run pretty fast just by converting them from one type to another. Sure. Uh, so um, also with the um, what's really neat with with um, format here. So we've got a bunch of our side menus. So I've just got my, my basic properties open here. I've got a lot of side menu options here that I, I do want to make sure that I, I show you guys. But you've got your navigation tools look a little bit different here. So you know, there's um, basically, you know, being perspective or orthographic, it's not uh, like a drop down choice. Um, so your your uh, top view here, uh, this is where you have your other view pieces. So some of your view buttons are going to be a little bit different and a little bit more. Some areas are going to be more compressed, some are going to be more expanded than you're used to um, in, in SketchUp. Um, and I did want to show you um, a really neat thing about, I mentioned the SketchUp library that you can bring in. You know how when you bring in something from SketchUp and it looks flat, but you, it's not? <laughs> I'm sure yeah, yeah. we dealt with this. I, you, yeah. You mean like the these kind of crazy polygons? I mean, something yeah. I remember so it, from SketchUp is you have a face and then you try to close it and it doesn't work. So you, you kind of have to uh, make all these diagonal line, li uh, lines up to the point where it finally creates a surface. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> yes. So uh, this is so this is um, just one solid you know object is all all connected, but it has it it's exactly that right. And you're like, I think this is closed, but one line slightly askew. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very frustrating. So that's another reason why sometimes starting with solids when you know you'll need a solid will be better. Um, and again, uh, up to you. But SketchUp has this neat tool where I have something called um, basically called flatten. It's flattened faces, mm -hmm. um, and it's. It, exactly what it sounds like it'll flatten that face so if i click on that it is now a solid piece and now i can extrude it oh so, so you mean it was not quite flat and now you've made it flat yeah and so this is this came over from sketchup so this is a uh -huh. direct sketchup import uh -huh. and just like you, you were saying like when we when it looks flat but it's not quite flat because yeah, yeah. it's got something slightly askew and it does this you can absolutely flatten that face here in SketchUp and or here in Format. So a SketchUp file can be flattened in Format, and then you can just and, utilize it like it's a flat face. And you cannot do that in SketchUp, right? Right. And flatten face goes a little bit further. So this is one of my one of my more favorite tools. It'll go a little bit further um, because basically, let me move this whole thing. Um, if I were to take a face of this, let's say this is a rough um, shape for an escalator or stairs or something, right? Like this is this is very much a uh, a people vertical moving people conveying thing, mm -hmm. and I need to extend it. The floor heights have changed, or I've I've changed um, something else about where it's connecting to. If I were to grab the face of this, it's going to come straight out. But if you grab the face of the um, uh, the uh, of something else that you want it to line up to and you can use the flatten um, face tool and I do this backwards all the time. So it just takes me a second <laughs> to pick where you want to move to and then what you want to move and now it'll extend itself in that same plane until they're aligned. So flatten face goes further than just flattening something that's slightly askew to being able to pull something in its continued plane. Mm -hmm. So that's really helpful when you're designing with angles. Cool. Um, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, something else really cool about it is, um, it's history for groups is separate than its main history. So what that means is if I have, um, this piece, let's say, okay, so I move this piece and I'm going to move it again. So it's very clearly we've moved this piece over here. Um, if I come into my, my groups and I want to edit them, um, 
I can edit them separately. So if I come here and I say, all right, I'm going to edit this. And again, it's a group, so they're, they're, tie they're tied together. Uh, let's just fold up really sharply. And I undo it. Um, the last thing I did was the group, but then there's my, my pyramid. But here's what's really cool is if I were to come into my group and I edit the group first here, so I'll just pull it back up. And I come out here and I grab my, my pyramids and I move that and just so that we can get a nice vis good visual that it's been moved. If I hit control Z, it's out there. If I come, um, so if I redo that and go into my group and I hit control Z, my pyramid stayed where it was but my group changed. So groups have their own history um, tree. So if you need to make some changes in a group and you go, oh no, I need to undo that, but you've done a bunch of work outside of that group, you're not gonna lose that. You can go back into your group and go through that history. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat, I think. That would have saved me a lot of headache. <laughs> sure. I might change my mind a lot. Yeah. So I'm a glancing at the chat i think there's a few comments about the content library i think we should uh, talk about that a little later um what else can you set up your own keyboard shortcuts asked by t scott collier um so i generally tend not to um just uh and i, I don't see an, an obvious way in, in settings to do it i haven't seen an obvious way going mm -hmm. through this um i do actually have my by the way i do have my toolbar button set large mm -hmm. um because when i'm sharing a large screen uh but um i tend i tend not to and same thing in Revit. i tend to recommend people not set custom ones anyone that's not defined you're welcome you know to set and that's because if you're trying to help someone and you go over and you start hitting mm -hmm. some keys or they come over to yours and then it's doing different things it, it can be a headache yeah, you mean um, not replace existing one, but you know, adding a shortcut for tools that don't have them is great. Because I have, yep. yeah, I always add a few dozens of shortcut on Revit, for example. But I, yeah, I've never yeah. modified the existing one. You're right about that. Yeah, um, but then as far but as far as um, uh, Formit goes, um, I haven't seen any built in. But um, Formit's API is open, so I'm not saying there's a way to do it. <laughs> But it would be a little bit more work than uh, would probably be expected. Um, yeah. Uh, else in the chat, there seems to be a SketchUp fan called IRV Inc. who says that a Vertex tool can do that. So he's mentioning a few, ex I guess it's extensions in SketchUp that you can add to boost mm -hmm. the basic SketchUp. And Alfredo yeah, says and uh, SketchUp out of the box is trash. It's trash. It's very basic. <laughs> But it's very fast, and uh, basically with uh, extensions, you can make it much better. Yep. So here's the really neat thing with Formit. Um, one, um, it's uh, continually being um, updated. The the project team is very responsive, and I do talk about this in, in the slides that we would get to at the very end. Um, but um, there are there are a lot of add-ins that SketchUp has, but so does Formit, and it has its own plugin playground where you can create your own plugins. So this is everything from, you know, filleting 2D corners, flipping along axis. Here's a really neat one called generate light string. And I actually really like this one because it's super pretty. By the way, this whole building over here was entirely built with Dynamo scripts preloaded into this, um, in, into format. So if I were to turn on uh, generate light strings, I can come here and I can say how many bulbs, um, number of bulbs for fixture, all these kinds of pieces I can set. Uh, and I can say, hey, generate the light string. And then there are my bulbs. Oh, that's cool. So th this is just, this is JavaScript. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, format JavaScript. Yeah, and so, know you, you know, can, JavaScript. I thought JavaScript was just for the web. Didn't know we could use it for for uh, software like this. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's crazy. It's, you know, so creating a, <laughs> creating a program is a little bit like kind of, um, my brain doesn't think that way. But if I were to look at the the code, I can tell you exactly what it's doing. So I, I mm -hmm. start with something that's close to what I want and then just go in and modify. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got it's got a lot of, of neat things and it's got a lot of um, pieces where you can preview what it's going to do uh, as well. So there's um, generate a vertex. So each element can have its own vertex and you can reset each vertex separately from each other. So um, you can have a series of different ver vertexes. Um, there's abilities to mesh things. There's a really um, 
there's actually a really nice um, piece that I really like to show people, a really nice tool in here called Loft. Isn't there and something can similar use... in SketchUp? I remember a Loft tool. Um, maybe, um, but I really like how this ends up working. Um, it's been, uh, so it's been like three years since I've used SketchUp and to be honest, you know, trying to keep format separate in my head has forced me to kind of break away yeah, a bit. From... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> there's no point in it constantly going back. Yeah. But there's this, uh, loft tool here. So if I click loft, I can say, Hey, select the face for a profile here. And then I say, all right, well, let's select the, so it says select the first loft, hit that next arrow select the next one. Once I'm done, I hit that finish button. If I needed a third one, I would hit the next arrow and so on. And I finish it and there it is. And what that basically means is I can bring in an AutoCAD file with lines and create an instant site. And because I can put this in Revit, I've got a complex site instantly in there that I don't have to deal with Revit's points. <laughs> oh, you know, the, the top of surface. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my one of the more fun tools I think that's that's built in here. Yeah, well, I'm super curious to talk about uh, Revit integration, but I think you probably have some more stuff to talk about directly in, in Formit. Yeah, I'm curious about the use of Dynamo. So you already have that yeah. th that plugin manager that seems to be using JavaScript. So are these scripts made by um, by Autodesk, or can you create your own JavaScript for Formit? How so does that there's. Work? Uh, the recommended ones are the ones that are, are suggested by the format team. They're actually made by the format team and, mm -hmm. um, and or at least super tested by them. There are some public ones built by the company. Um, these are people who uh, look like they're just they're testing the um, that, that plugin manager. And so you can see um, and then the ones that you've actually turned on, you can manage them separately. So that's my little light string. I can just turn it off so it's, it's not in there if I don't want it to be. Um, but yeah, you can you can absolutely make your own. You can share them publicly. Um, you can add your your private or local plugin. You do have to um, you know to build your own. You do have to have a it up on a on a specific place and how you share it. So, um, but yeah, you can absolutely add your own here uh, and, and build your own. And what other people have built can be shared too. Um, so before I hop into Dynamo, I wanted to show you a really. Yeah, sure, um, sure two or well maybe three things um one one is the materials are super simple by the way um and you can actually harvest materials from other format projects so if you're so for example when i use site logistics i use a lot of the same things my fence is always the same color my material lay down always the same color and, and so on and so forth i can harvest that material from a previous project and have it just already loaded in here or i can you know make a library um, but you actually can access um, Revit's material library as well. And anything that you bring in from here keeps its UV mapping into Revit. So any rotation, any scale, anything that you've made in here, Revit will keep. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's yeah, that's really helpful. Yeah, because in in <laughs> Revit, there, there, there aren't any UV maps at all, right? Right. You can just, uh, the best you can do is if you want textures, you can, you have to set a pattern, then you have to rotate the pattern. It's okay if it's straight, but like if you have a curved object, for example, it's basically impossible to set up the texture. Yeah. So is this something you can do in Formit, like to set up? Absolutely. Let's say you have a curved, that's why I mentioned wood earlier. Let's say you have a curved wood structure. Could you uh, place a linear texture on the, on the piece of wood, for example? Yeah. And once you do, um, you'll be able to grab it and rotate it. Um, so. Uh, it, it's got a lot of the the same. So there's a color, the bump, there's cutout, there's its name, transparency, all that fun stuff. Um, but once you paint a, a surface with it, um, here it is. Oh, I've got my block selected. Sorry, because um, this would be easier to show. Um, but you can actually um, select this, and here's um, UV uh, mapping, so you can adjust that material placement. And then you've got, and I know, oh, this is a bad choice because this is really hard to see. <laughs> Um, but you've got the ability to um, scale it in individual directions. You've got the ability to um, grab and you can rotate them. Um, you can move how you want it to be aligned. Um, it, it gets really, so here's my uh, little rotate icon. And it's really hard to see, but you can absolutely rotate that and then it'll keep that. So instead of it being lined up on the uh, orthogonal here, it's and when I bring that into Revit, it'll stay in that direction. 
So regardless of how that wood's curved, if mm -hmm. I rotate that pattern and it's straight and I, I, I rotate it how I want it to be and it'll just repeat itself over and over, that's how it'll work. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's similar to more complex 3D modeling software such as uh, 3ds Max, for example, where we can really go deep with uh, uh, UV maps. Yep. And because Revit keeps that, it really brings your stuff to the next level, which is a really great time to mention that there are some downsides to form it, such as there is no built-in renderer. Um, you can turn on sun and shadows, but what you see is what you get. Uh, so mapping everything in uh, form it, since it goes into Revit anyway and keeps all of its mapping, um, you can take it into Revit, you can take it into 3ds Max, and then you can do some uh, your rendering tools in there, and it keeps everything's already set up. So it's just a matter of the um, import export time mm -hmm. uh, to get that to go, and then you render it. Uh, there are, I think we should answer a few questions that are kind of popping okay. up before we move on to the Dynamo, right. which I'm excited to talk about. Yeah, one of the questions from JC was, can you connect Formit to a render engine? So uh, the answer is no, but you can easily import to Revit or 3ds Max uh, to use rendering tools, I guess. I'm a big fan of Enscape, so I guess if I had a, yeah. a Formit project, I could import in Revit and use Formit, and the textures would show up properly. Yep. All right. Uh, okay. D cube 42 asks is it necessary to create groups or components of an object necessary no helpful yes mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's some benefits to groups um if you actually have a uh, group so groups are the only things that can be on layers um but groups will also allow you to um, change a category so there are some categories that revit and format see together most things are by default are set to mass um, but you can take them and you can assign them to casework. You can assign it to furniture, entourage if you're building that um, generic model and so on. So that way, when you bring it into Revit, it at least has some categories that it can go to other than mass. And Revit is, uh, Revit, sorry, Autodesk is working on the roadmap to expand a lot of this integration. Um, and the more traction form it gets, the more people using it in the community, the more people talking about it, that squeaky wheel. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, looking at the other questions. Uh, uh, Javier asks, so what is the workflow to start a project? Do you need to worry about the internal origin? My workflow starts with a CAD file from a surveyor, usually located far from the CAD internal. Okay, so um, if you have the CAD file and you open that in Revit first, you can then launch form it from Revit and it'll utilize those internal um, points. So it'll it'll take um, the the origin that Revit's then using and when it launches form it, you'll be in line with it. And I'll show that in just a, in, as soon as we get through the, the Dynamo piece. All right, okay, yeah, so for integration. So you, it's a good workflow to use with Revit. So it, the, the software is really best used within the AEC suite, right? It is, yeah. Um, and it does have a few extra little pieces that are pretty neat. Like you can control the surfaces and what they look like, the front and back colors of your faces, some visual styles showing edges. You can do the sketchy edges. And so you can you can jazz it up a bit. Um, and you can even talk about like, so there's your grid and your, your axis there. So you can see all those pieces. Um, but it does have diagnostics here. So we'll actually show you anything um, that um, is back facing or any like watertight issues. So watertight issues are things that aren't enclosed. So for example, this space isn't enclosed. Um, just kind of one of those things. Um, you can also see the backsides of faces. So for those of you working in uh, SketchUp and you'd constantly have, oh, that's the back face, it's the wrong face, or I put the you know, material backwards, it'll actually identify that for you before you even bother exporting it. Um, but with that, then I wanna just take a, a go into to Dynamo, uh, if that's for good to do that. It's a uh, it's pretty solid in what it can create. So you can create everything from a column grid. So all you do is you click the tool, click the script that you wanna run and then place it. And then after that, you get a bunch of pieces to edit and you can run it. 
So if you wanted to change the count, the size, the height, the column length, any of these pieces, you can change. Um, extending the grid lines, right, so the grid lines stick out. Um, you can turn, you know, on or off columns if you don't want columns, if you want circular columns. Um, you can run that and then you could just run it and it'll rerun itself. So, but here's the best part about Dynamo Informant. Yeah. Are you ready? For yeah, this? go ahead. It has multiple endpoint capabilities and can run multiple scripts at the same time. Revit can't. Revit can only one, run one at a time and it's from start to finish. Formit can say when it hits a point, there can be a decision and it can go this way or it can go that way. And Formit can go from start to a different end within that within its own logic. And while you're running that and it's updating, you can update a different script. So it can handle running multiple ones at the same time. That's cool. Yeah, and it's what I see. It, this is some kind of uh, super Dynamo player, like from. Yep. <laughs> it seems like much much better than the Revit Dynamo player, right? I mean, yeah, that's much more information. Actually, yeah, and you can go right into this edit uh, edit the graph too. So it'll start Dynamo. It'll pull up the the piece um, of of information. It's going to take a second. It's going to load it. Um, but here's the, what that is. And so there it is in the background, and you can mm -hmm. see the whole piece. So again, if I had to start this from scratch, my, my brain just goes blank, but I'm sitting here going, oh, you know what, this is really cool, but I need to be able to add something about um, copying the, the grid lines up multiple levels. I could come in here, find where the grid lines are and start adding pieces to it. So you can absolutely build your own um, pieces. Uh, you can modify the existing ones, but again, best practice, copy, you know, save, save it as a duplicate <laughs> and then modify that one. So you always have the core to go back to. So yeah, as far as Dynamo goes, there's there's all kinds of things. There's column grids, um, there's louvers. So as I mentioned, this whole building was built using Dynamo scripts. So this was actually, um, if I go into my little group here, this is a, a, a louver piece, a louver system that was run from the Dynamo script. And this is the line that it follows down on the ground there. So unfortunately that line's visible, but um, it was told, hey, do the louvers follow this path, go along. So everything, like the grids, uh, so the, the column grids that are in here are built from that, that grid. There's um, the ability to build um, uh, curtain walls here. So you can just build curtain walls. Hmm, that's cool. So yeah, and it seems yeah. that the, the interface of Dynamo seems much, much more user friendly than with Revit. I, I absolutely think it is. Um, and again, one of those things that, that um, Formit doesn't have yet emphasis on yet um, is the ability to do a lot of tags in 2D. So you can't you can't do uh, annotations, um, but you can still do 3D text at least. And it is a Dynamo script and you would uh, come down here and say, you know, oh, let me actually select my text and you can run it and it'll modify itself. And you can actually um, change. Um, so while it's running, you know, I can move around, do other things. You can change its font and all kinds of um, all kinds of information about it. Cool. So I, I think we should mention that I'm guessing most people are familiar with Dynamo, especially if you're using Revit, you cer most certainly know what it is. But I uh, also think maybe there's some people that are SketchUp users interested in alternatives. So Dynamo is a visual programming interface. Uh, similar, probably if you're using SketchUp, you might know Grasshopper, which I think is compatible with SketchUp. So it's quite, it's the equivalent to Grasshopper in a sense. I'm getting that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I, I think so. Uh, a few more questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me have a look, just make sure. Somebody mentioned the Fred 06 tools in SketchUp for uh, loft and contours. I haven't played in SketchUp uh, in. Uh, in a long time so i'm not sure what that means it's pretty crazy to think about it when i was in college back in 2005 we actually used sketchup it's been around for a really long time yeah and, uh, and then when sketchup sold the trimble mm -hmm. autodesk decided to hire those people and build format oh really so it's uh format was built by former sketchup people it was wow i didn't know that uh, yeah at some point it was uh, i don't know if people remember this but google owned uh, SketchUp, <laughs> like around 2008, Back 2009. Back when it was free. Yeah. yeah it w was it entirely free? 
I believe so. Or at least there was a free version. Uh -huh. Yeah, and S S Scar DX mentioned in chat earlier on is that uh, uh, problems that uh, s software like Format face is that everybody in college, already architecture students are using SketchUp. At least uh, from yeah. what I understand. So it's that's what they know. So when they get in the workplace, they won't use the same tool they're used to. Yeah, that's actually a really great point. And I'll make sure to bring that up with the Autodesk team. So mm -hmm. um, I, this is a little bit of jumping the shark because I mentioned at the end too. The Autodesk team behind Formit is highly responsive on the forums. Mm -hmm. they, they respond within a day. Um, I, I raised a, a flag um, about you know needing help um, before before this this um, this presentation even um, because there's a change in a workflow and I wanted to make sure that I completely and utterly understood that and I messaged the team at like 9 p.m. last night and I got a response first thing this morning so they're really responsive. That's cool. Well, I, I hope they're watching too. Um... <laughs> No, I'm not saying you'll get that response. I just I do I do a lot of format promotion, so I get a little bit higher in the priority. Yeah, yeah, but... sure. Uh, Rohan asks, will this be available post the live stream? Yes, you can with the same link. You can watch the replay. Uh, Greg asks, can you import a sketch from Autodesk Sketchbook, for example, as a base concept starter image for plan or elevation? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know what file type that is. I get. Can you? I guess you could export to JPEG. So um, yeah, you so can import JPEG. It, it'll yeah, it'll bring in JPEGs, um, PNGs. It does. Uh, there's your SketchUp, SAT files, OBJ. There's there's all kinds of. Um, so these are all the file formats that it uh, it'll support here. Um, let's do a few more questions. Then I think it would be interesting to talk about uh, that workflow. Yeah, going to Revit. Uh, IRV Inc. asks, can Formit handle larger poly counts, geometries much better than SketchUp? Yes and no. So it actually has a piece. So uh, this is, by the way, uh, you can actually create a joint session where you can have multiple people in here. So you can actually have other collaborators um, live while you're working on it. Um, assuming, of course, I didn't click too many buttons and kill, kill myself. Uh, <laughs> but um, there's a tool in the plugin that'll let you rebuild fillet curves or re fillet curves, sorry, rebuild curves based on number of um, um, the polygon pieces. So you, while you're moving around and working, you can set that really low. So, you know, your circles can appear like squares or hexagons or octagons. And then when it comes time to, um, you know, render or, or produce it um, elsewhere. And of course I, uh, there we go. So I can copy the link to, to the clipboard and I can share that out. Uh, if I'd like. Um, so you can see who's joined, by the way, and chat with each other. Hey, you go work on this area. So it's really nice. Um, sorry, back to the curve piece. Um, there's, a, there's a plugin and you can, um, in the plugin, it's uh, dealing with the uh, rebuild and exploding um, curves um, pieces. So effectively you can um, take it from um, up to a hundred lines down to, I want to say like it might go as low as four, but essentially that's the octagon while working. When you're ready to export it or render it, set it back to a hundred. And so it'll go faster when they're smaller and it'll do the same thing on curves. Um, so there, there's a whole, there's a whole piece about it, um, it, a piece built specifically to enhance that workflow. I can invite others to collaborate if I'd like, I can copy that clipboard, but I'm just going to stop my session. But I did want to um, show you guys that you can actually have multiple people collaborating at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can put this up on BIM 360. You can open it from BIM 360. Yeah, that little, the really... little chat feature seems pr pretty nice. I mean, didn't Revit had a communicator at some point and they've killed it? <laughs> it did, and they killed it because it was a security weakness. Really? Yeah, they couldn't get um, certain certifications for specific like government level piece. Um, oh, whatever those letters are, mm -hmm. all those acronyms for for the security clearance, essentially for it to be able to I be used on projects. It. That communicator was a weak point, and they had to get rid of it. All right, so a couple more questions, and then I want to talk about the workflows with Revit. Okay. But uh, uh, Score DX asks, uh, Revit is notorious for wrong direction backface. Will Formit able to take Revit adaptive massing and flip it? 
Um, when you bring in something from Revit, you can't interact with it. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just it's just there for reference. So I'm gonna have to say probably no. Mm -hmm. All right. But um, that's not to say that maybe there's a plugin script that can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, time is uh, quickly running out. So I want to talk about yeah. the uh, workflows uh, with Revit. I mean. Until very recently, I used to work for our architecture office and designers, they, they want to use SketchUp. There's no way around it. You can try to force them to use Revit, but they just, they don't want to. And I don't blame them. You know, Revit is not, it's Easy. it's not, well, it's like, I can do it. I can design, do some design work in Revit. I'm used to it. I actually have a, a course about presenting uh, with, with Revit, but I, I do get it from designers. It's not intuitive it's not the best tool for that kind of work so yeah like but the problem is it once they're done and they're like here's my work take the sketch up and create a model a rivet model out of it that's it's kind of a nightmare you have to start you cannot use SketchUp geometry you can import it as a reference uh yeah but, so there's, but it's kind of a mess and then sometimes what you end up with parallel model so you would have a rivet model and at the same time designers are you know making changes on a SketchUp. then they tell the rivet team Hey, can you uh, modify the uh, the Revit model so it matches what you can see in SketchUp? So it's it's a huge loss of time, I think. Duplication of effort, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so as I go to show that, I did get this pop up, and I wanted to show you guys. This is one thing that also drove me crazy because the first time I did this, I closed this. I haven't saved my changes, and I closed mm -hmm. this so that continue and discards what's highlighted. So it looks like it's the right thing to do. But if you haven't saved, because normally you're thinking save and exit, right? Yeah. Um, it's not. It'll it'll get rid of all of your 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 changes so yeah that's, um be careful when you exit <laughs> that seems really not intuitive at all <laughs> it's yeah I, I put that i put that in and they're like eh, sure but wouldn't you rather have revit connectivity and i'm like yeah okay <laughs> so uh with that i'm gonna go ahead and i've got um revit 2022 open i'm just gonna create a new file here so I've got 2022 and 2021 open for um, two different reasons. Um, 2022 is the one that started to have the um, integration with um, format. So if I just come here and I grab this wall and I say, all right, you know, here we go. This is the this is an existing building and I'm designing something over here, whatever it is. I can go to, um, so let me go to my 3D view just so we can see this when it comes back. Um, massing in sight here. This is where that format 3D sketch is. I click on that, it's going to ask me to launch format with all visible Revit objects showing or launch it with selected objects showing. I don't have anything selected, so I'm gonna do this. One word of warning, if you have nothing in here, if there's no geometry in here and you say launch with all visible objects, it will fail. You can do it with selected objects, even though nothing is selected and it, will, it should still open it for you and be fine. Um, so that's good for like starting a project where you set up your coordinates inside of Revit already. <laughs> So, so just kind of so wait um, you said that. that's new from revit 2022 yeah uh, really i never I don't remember seeing that button exactly 2022 it's hidden in massing in sight nobody ever really goes into yeah. massing anymore so yeah. <laughs> uh so i launched the format it's going to open it's going to take um a moment to open but i promise this part's pretty quick and I do have a few head-to-head -head comparisons with Format and SketchUp um, to, to talk about, but there's my, there it is. And you'll see, I get this big cannot do sign over. I can't interact with it. Uh, it's just there for reference. So if I wanted to do anything else around here, I can come here, there's like this built-in wall tool, by the way. And so you can tab and say, you know, however thick it is, if you want the alignment to be right, left, center, it doesn't matter. And you can just like draw your, your you know, your space, however you want it to be. If I wanted it to, you know, line up more, pay more attention, but I'm trying to be really quick here so I can say, all right, I've done this great conceptual sketch, this wonderful piece, let's send it back to Revit. There's now a send to Revit button. And I send that model back to Revit. It's gonna say all visible except for um, the Revit context layer. If you have selected items, you can do selected ones only. This is going to be important. When I bring it back into Revit, I'll show you why. So I hit okay. It doesn't give you a pop-up, which is on their list, but it's already back in Revit. So there's the piece I brought in from SketchUp. The reason that those selected elements are important um, is because if you're doing a lot of sketching and you want pieces to be broken up, or maybe you can move them around inside of Revit, or you can control their visibility separate, you'll want different um, SketchUp files uh, pieces brought in so that you can have different groups to, to work with. 
Um, but there it is. It's 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 in here. Uh, if I make more changes, if I say, oh, you know what? It turns out it's like this. I can then go back to my um, mass and relaunch SketchUp. And this is the key. You said SketchUp. It's all right. Form it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a sketch. It says 3D sketch. It just it's the wording is is terrible here. Um, so forgive all of my misspeaks because they will happen frequently. Uh, this is now dead. Once I've sent this back to Revit, um, if I make a change in Revit, it, this is dead. You, you'll need to launch a new instance of Revit because it's not going to update this Revit piece that is on their roadmap. Um, but currently, basically, once you send it back to Revit, I would just close out a format and launch a new instance if I've made a change in Revit. Um, and something that you will notice, and there re there's a reason that I have um, Revit 2021 open. I want to show you something that we used to do with Formit that isn't possible in 2022 directly anymore. Um, so there's 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 two two workflows for this. Um, basically, inside of the the old Revit previous versions of Revit, um, it was it's an add-in to import Formit into Revit, and you can come in here and I can say here's a mass test import set, import that I made um, this morning specifically to show you guys this piece. Yeah, they've killed that, right, in 2022? Right, there's no, because it directly links. Um, mm -hmm. You would, you can, um, but even without it, you would import it. So when you go to insert, you import from CAD now, and they've just put the file format, same thing with SketchUp. So SketchUp and Format are both now under import CAD. So it's a .axm file format. Yep. Oh, okay. No idea what that stands yeah. for. <laughs> So here's this mask that I brought in. So you can see that I can actually, um, my visibility graphics have mass, masses turned off, actually. Let me go turn those on. Uh, there we go. So you can actually see I can interact with these pieces. So if I come to architecture and I go to wall and I say, OK, let me do a wall by face, right? Because I, I laid the sketch out. This is exactly what I want. I just, you know, I started with a one foot wall and it's actually going to be an eight, you know, an eight inch wall, but my edges are correct. So I, you know, just come in here and say, you know, turn these spaces into walls. And then as I hide my masses um, or, you know, tab through and select and just, you know, hide that piece. Not the light bulb. <laughs> oh, I'm under, uh, let's see, select previous. Here we go, uh, hide element. Um, so as we hide things, you'll be able to see that it's just the walls that are in there. Mm -hmm. And why didn't that hide? There we go. Um, so yeah, so you'll see that here's my walls. So you take a sketch and you can do wall by face. In 2022, and this is one of the, 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 the not fun pieces, is it doesn't do that directly. So once you're happy with what you want to bring in and you want to convert it over, there is an intermediary step that I'm, I'm sad about, but is on the roadmap to be fixed. You would open um, open a Revit mass family, bring that file in there, then import that mass family into your Revit project and you'll be able to do all the faces. So this way, so basically how it's going back and forth between Formit and Revit is, hey, do you like how this looks? Hey, let's make this change. Hey, now that we've got this ready and we're done with it and we want to turn it into actual construction documentation, take it into a family, then bring that family in and we can turn that into something that we can document construction-wise. construction, construction -wise. Yeah, interesting. So yeah, I, I guess that would be a workflow for the whole building, a workflow that I frequently uh, saw, especially in bigger projects. Is For example, we had a Revit project and then we had a phase where we had to design the, the casework, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, like we had a hotel, for example. So all like the, the entrance desk, which we would usually have a designer go to SketchUp and then we'd try to import it to Revit and kind of try to create a family around it. So a, a use that I could see is if people can use the format directly. So what you've you said is you, you yeah. could have different format file or you can select them independently. Let's say you have different pieces of casework, for example. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you can actually absolutely select them differently. And again, um, part of that mm -hmm. is, uh, this is just the, the, um, the Revit content, but it actually has casework in here. So if you're designing casework, mm -hmm. you can have it as casework, oh, send that back to Revit and Revit will go, oh, hey, oh, this cool. is casework. Oh, for the correct so, category. Oh, that's interesting. 
yeah not all categories are in here clearly there's there's it's very limited there's you know yeah. no family there's furniture systems but no like wall systems and roof systems yeah and what what happens if you cut uh, geometry in uh, in revit format geometry uh so the the format geometry in revit in revit um so just importing it into revit yeah well i wonder because uh, in, in revit there are some kind of families that are in, how do they call it not cuttable which means when you, you cut through them you don't see much ah uh, yes yeah exactly so it's it, it'll depend on um it'll depend on what category it's in as to how it'll work um but being able to bring it in as a mass and convert it over with some of the systems that are in place is pretty helpful um but we can actually we can just cut a, a section right now and go to that view I can't tell if it's cut through. <laughs> um, so it's a furniture system. Um, what, yeah, wait, wait are these all default parameters that you have in your project? Yeah, all default. Everything's default. Nothing. I mean, nothing... I mean that big list of para well, people cannot see it. There you go. Oh, these. Yeah, pieces? all these parameters. Oh, these? oh. No, no, no. Um, I'm sorry. FP here uh, stands for um, Fab Pro, and it's an add-in that I have. Oh, it's an add-in. Um, okay. So by by M Suite, yeah, it's for fabrication. It has nothing to do with design, so it, it deals with with MEP spooling and fabrication. So I deal with like both ends of the spectrum, from form it to let's get that built in real life. So, um, but yeah, so it it'll depend um, kind of on the family, and again, that workaround is you can import it into a Revit family, right? So mm. you can say new family, bring it in there, and then bring that family into Revit, and it'll function like a typical, like a family of whatever category. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super interesting because uh, I think you seem to be fr frozen. I hope it's not my internet. Uh, yeah, but I was saying in the model and place tool from Revit is pretty terrible <laughs> always have trouble with it basically no one should use uh, this tool so uh, meanwhile i think that andrel might have crashed are you there andrel the show was coming to a close anyway all right so we can see my face in double because it's all messed up can you share your screen again Oh, you cannot hear me. No problem. Just a, a quick moment while we fix our technical difficulties. I cannot hear you, Andrel. S still cannot hear you. C can you... Uh... Can you share uh, your screen meanwhile, so it will at least fix my my little views? All right. Well, while Andrel is trying to fix her little difficulties, I'll anyway. The show was slowly coming to an end, but I uh, will give you a reminder uh, for the next episode, which will be with Eli Gold, episode number sixteen, uh, which is called "Mastering Wood Structure." I've created uh, with Eli a timber curtain wall system. I think it's going to be amazing, especially if you are interested in wood. Oh, I can kind of hear you. Wait, can you try again? Okay, wait a second. There you go, Andrew. Can you try to speak? Yes. I... What crashed? Zoom. Zoom just crashed. Zoom when crashed. It crashes, my headset just won't wouldn't reconnect. So. Yeah, no problem. Well, you know what? It was kind of good timing where the show was coming to an end. Did, did you have anything to add? Um, just the, that, um, you know, uh, 
I had a few workaround pieces for where form it's a little bit better in SketchUp. So just a reminder of solid geometries, it works with Revit levels, materials, categories. There's advanced modeling tools. It has dynamo and flattened faces. And then uh, it has room for improvement because SketchUp still has guides. Um, SketchUp can do animation, so there's no video exporter in Formit, um, so you can record it using a third party, such as like Snagit, um, or you can just bring it into Revit or 3ds Max, same thing for rendering. Um, and then it, SketchUp has something called Match Photo, which Formit doesn't have. Um, SketchUp does support 3ds Ma uh, 3D Nice, um, but Formit has touchpad and tablet, so you can draw with your pen, which might be better. Uh, and then um, Annotations, again, SketchUp has, Formit doesn't. And last but not least, Formit is included in your AEC collection. The community is small, so it's very attentive. Um, they're very responsive, so get involved in ideas and help. Uh, there's continuous development, and then just that reminder of being careful when you close that unsaved Formit file, as we saw. That's it. All right, great. Well, don't worry about it. I mean, determining what's kind of perfect, we're, we're done anyway. So we got these final words. So uh, where can people find you? Find Formit or me? You. <laughs> oh, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, Andrew Alanowitz, I guarantee you I'll be the only one. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. That'll be your best guess. And all right. So you, you are with USCAD in Arizona. So people can hire you as a BIM consultant? <laughs> USCAD, they can, yeah. All right. Uh, all right, any final words or you know, message to my audience, something you want to say? Uh, just thank you guys for your time. Please explore this uh, and get that feedback to the community. Your feedback will make Formit better and therefore the better it is, the more likely you'll use it. So that's where we're at. All right, thanks, Andrea. Well, that was super interesting. I'm kind of stoked up to try it now. I admit I've been skeptical of Formit like the first time I saw it. It's what is it, this kind of the SketchUp clone? I don't. I never thought I would use it, but um, like what I saw, especially from Dynamo and Derivit integration. I mean, there's a, it's still a few things I think they could work out. Derivit integration, what you mentioned, but uh, I think it's getting there. And yeah, while you crashed, I mentioned the horrible model in place tool from Revit. I mean, w what a horrible <laughs> garbage tool, and I. Yeah, it would be cool to have a nice quick modeling tool to use in Revit just for test, just for conceptual design that you can add to your BIM geometry. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty excited to try that. So yeah, that's the, the, the final thing. So goodbye to everybody and see you next week with Eli Gold. We'll be talking about wood. Uh, bye, Andrea, and bye to everybody in the chat. See you. Bye. Thanks. All right.